Hey guys, welcome to Unplugged Performance. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to install our rear camber arms on this Tesla Model 3 Performance. This is the Highland. However, this installation process is the same on all of the first generation Model 3s as well as the first generation Model Y, which I guess is really all we've seen thus far. Hoping for that refresh soon. For a more in-depth explanation on camber or any alignment specs, check out our alignment video here. So on the table here, I have the OEM arm, which is a hollow steel arm uh, loaded with a rubber joint relative to the unplugged performance billet aluminum arm, which has a spherical joint. Now the arm itself from the factory, it, because it is hollow steel, it does have the capacity for flexion during rotation, during like hard acceleration and things of that nature, as well as the rubber bushing itself has some deflection because it does have some capacity for movement when under load. Whereas the billet aluminum arm from unplugged performance uh, does not have that. It is a much more rigid arm. So you don't have any of that rotation during enthusiast driving, nor do you have any of that actual range of motion on the bushing side that actually connects to the subframe itself. The purpose of this is it allows you to retain a more optimal alignment during enthusiast driving. The main benefit of our camber arm is that it is adjustable relative to the factory arm that is not adjustable. This allows you to add or subtract camber, whether you're looking to dial in your vehicle for a track alignment or if you're looking to minimize your tire wear. These camber arms allow you to dial in your alignment for whatever your vehicle needs may be. Today we are just going to be installing this to dial back out the negative camber that is introduced to this vehicle because we are putting in our dual rate lowering springs. And the natural progression of the rear end of a car when you do drop it is you will get additional negative camber which can increase the overall tire wear. That can be good for performance oriented driving and things of that nature. However, this customer is going to be using this as a daily vehicle. So we're gonna be dialing that back out while dropping their car and retaining that OEM alignment. Now, if you are interested in lowering your vehicle using our lowering springs, check out our lowering spring installation video right here. Now let's go ahead and get started. It doesn't take very many tools and luckily every nut and bolt on this installation is going to be the exact same size. You need nothing but 21s here, both to remove the wheel as well as remove the OEM camber arm and install the new camber arm on the car. Okay, first things first, obviously get your car up in the air and get the wheels off. Once the wheels are off, you then have access to the 21 millimeter nut and bolt on the hub as well as the subframe. Now on the OEM bushing, a lot of the time there is load here. So you, you wanna be sure that you loosen the subframe side before you loosen the hub side. Uh, the reason being is if you do not, there may be upward pressure. So once this bolt is removed and this portion of the arm is free, it may swing upward with a lot of velocity. And the last thing you wanna do is get hurt when you're trying to work on your car. We are going to be cracking this nut and bolt loose first. Okay, that should have removed all the pressure and now I can proceed to the hub here. that. You want to be sure that you press inward on the top of the rear rotor to relieve pressure from the outer bolt and remove it from the hub assembly. And then slide the bolt right out. Remove the other nut and bolt on the subframe side by hand. And then this guy should slide right out. The first step when you get the OEM arm out of the car is to match the unplugged performance camber arm length to that OEM arm. Um, what I like to do is essentially use the OEM hardware as reference to ensure that these are lined up and then just essentially eyeball the hub end slot to make sure that those align with each other as well which they should. Yeah, it looks about right. Okay, now that we've matched the lengths, we're gonna go ahead and keep these nuts loose here because these are something that we will fine tune once we have the vehicle on the alignment rack. But for all intents and purposes now, we're gonna reuse the OEM uh, bolts as well as the 21 millimeter nuts to install this on the car. So on some cars, the subframe may be a little bit tight when you install this section. So if you need to, you can always apply white lithium grease to ensure that this does slide in here smoothly. And one thing to keep in mind is the bolt length itself is different on the hub side versus the subframe side. You really can't get this wrong because the bolt on the subframe side is too short to be able to actually get the retainer nut um, on the back side here. So when you're installing that, just keep in mind there is a specific location for each one of these bolts. I'm going to be applying some pressure to the hub itself allows the bolt to slide into the hub slot accordingly and be properly lined up. And now we will get these torqued down to factory spec 
Now, generally, when replacing a suspension arm, you would torque the hardware when the vehicle weight is loaded onto the suspension to ensure that the rubber joints have a proper range of motion without accelerating the wear and tear on that joint. Now, because the UP arm has a spherical joint with a large range of motion, the joints do not carry load. So we are able to torque hardware to spec at this point in time without loading the weight of the vehicle onto the suspension. So now that we have this done, we'll go ahead and get these torqued. We will get the wheels back on to take this over to the alignment rack. To ensure that anti-seize is applied to all of the active threads based on your suspension settings, be sure to consult your alignment technician. Once your alignment specs have reached their desired setting, you wanna ensure that both of the lock nuts are torqued to the same spec. Alrighty guys, this concludes our Model 3 NY rear camber arm installation video for today. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, go ahead and keep an eye out for future videos that are going to be released on our channel soon. If there's any specific items that you would like to see installed, go ahead and let us know what your request is on the comments below. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.